like to welcome you to our worship service this evening. Today is a special day in the, uh, the church here. Today is the day of the Ascension of our Lord. The Feast of the Ascension uh, has everything in it. Christmas, Good Friday, Easter Sunday, the Ascension itself, the anticipation of Pentecost, and the whole non-festival half of the church here as well. It's Ascension Day. Jesus has triumphed and has entered into his glory by keeping all of his word. Today is his triumph, and it guarantees us that he will always keep his word. We follow the order of service found for you in your service, hymn, uh, service folder. We begin our first hymn, uh, Hymn of Glory Let Us Sing. We'll sing verses, uh, uh, it's hymn number 390, uh, 389. And we'll sing verses 1 through 4 and then verse 7. <laughs>
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. And also with you. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise his name in the heights above. Praise, Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, him all his heavenly hosts. How majestic is the Lord's name in all the earth. He has set his glory above the heavens. For the Lord is the Most High over all the earth. He is exalted far above all gods. God has ascended amid shouts of joy, the Lord amid the sounding of trumpets. God reigns over the nations. God is seated on his holy throne. The Lord reigns. Let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim. Let the earth shake. The throne of our God will last forever and ever. A scepter of justice will be the scepter of his kingdom. Praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His splendor is above the earth and on the heavens. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn, 359.
pray. Lord Jesus, King of glory, you have ascended far above the heavens, and at God's right hand you rule the nations. Leave us not alone, we pray, but grant us the spirit of truth, that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let me see it. This evening we read a harmony of the Gospels based on the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and also including the Acts of the Apostles. We read these words as follows in Jesus' name. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instruction through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. Soon after the resurrection, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. On one occasion, Jesus said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so that they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. On another occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. I am going to send you what my Father has promised. But stay in the city until you have clothed, you have been clothed with the power from on high. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. When Jesus had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And while he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven before their very eyes. And the cloud hid them from their sight, hid him from their sight, and he sat at the right hand of God. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus, who has been taken from you into heaven, will come back in the same way that you have seen him go into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day's walk from the city. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. Here ends our reading. Please stand as we confess our faith using uh, the second article of the Apostles' Creed from Luther's small catechism. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, 
is my Lord. He has redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, purchased and won me from all sin, from death, and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy, precious blood, and with his innocent suffering and death. All this he did that I should be his own, and live under him in his kingdom, and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he has risen from the dead, lives and rules eternally. This is most certainly true. Please be seated. We sing our next hymn on Christ's ascension I now build, hymn number 392. He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or the season that the Father has sent by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Here ends our text, we pray. Dear Heavenly Father, you have given us a wonderful life your son, his birth in Bethlehem, to his wonderful ministry, and then, of course, his passion and death. And then, of course, the wonderful, absolutely terrific news that you accepted his sacrifice on our behalf and raised him again on Easter. Tonight we look at how you brought him back to you in heaven, restoring to him all glory and honor that was always his. Be with us tonight as we meditate on your words concerning this a wonderful account. We ask you to guard our hearts and our minds and make us make all that we do and here tonight be pleasing in your sight. 
Please be seated. Your friends and fellow redeemed in our ascended Lord, what makes you feel powerful? That's an interesting question to ask yourself. For me, I think I could write a whole page worth of things. You see, I'm addicted to power. I like feeling powerful. I like to be in control. And when I was reading through the text for today, I couldn't help but think of this question. Especially when I read the words from Jesus, you will be my witnesses. Being a witness for Jesus is a powerful thing, isn't it? Knowing who Jesus is, what he has done, and why it matters is so powerful. That's something that you and I have in common with the apostles. Sure, the way Jesus had commissioned us to share his message may be a little different than they did. But like the apostles, we know the gospel. And we called and we are called to share it. It's part of being a Christian. We are Jesus witnesses. So as those disciples, those first disciples, were gathered on the Mount of Olives the day Jesus was taken from them up to heaven, did his first witnesses feel powerful? Well, we have just one recorded sentence from the apostles, and it's a question. What do they say? Lord, is this the time when you are going to restore the kingdom of Israel? Man, these apostles had heard and seen an awful lot. Even if we just limited to the last 43 or 44 days, the Thursday evening in the upper room, all of the events on Good Friday, the whirlwind of Easter Sunday, all of the post-resurrection appearances, the lectures on the kingdom of God, having Jesus open their minds so that they could understand the scripture, Surely these men knew what kind of Messiah and King Jesus was. They now understood that he was the fulfillment of the Old Testament Messiah, who would suffer and die in the place of man. He was the Son of God who would soon return to the Heavenly Father, having accomplished his Father's will, victory over sin, death, and the devil. Yet, influenced by their time and their culture, the apostles, the holy apostles as they're called, were still holding on to the notion that there was a political side to Jesus' reign and messiahship. So if the apostles felt powerful as they were gathered there on Mount of Olives, was their sense of power misplaced? Was it tied to an earthly reign? To a kingdom of their risen Lord? Might there have been a thought that there was maybe something for me? A place or position of power and authority with my name on it when Jesus restores the kingdom of Israel? So Jesus, when's this kingdom restoration going to happen? That was their question. Now it may be a little speculative, but to try to say what specifically prompted the, of the apostles' question. Could it have been a craving for earthly power and authority? Maybe. Or maybe not. But what is, what's, the, what's not speculation is where my confidence, where my own sense of power often comes for a witness for Jesus. I too am influenced by my time and my culture. Our culture says if things are going well, 
Take the credit. Pat yourself on the back. And boy, does my sinful pride grab onto that. So when things go well, as I witness for Jesus, I take the credit. I feel powerful. I think, I really let my light shine today. It's my power that It's me and my power, my smooth personality, that couple living next door is coming to church next week. It's my power, my willingness to give up my own time, my extra elbow grease that caused the last outreach event to go so well. I'm the model churchgoer. I'm the model witness for Jesus. It's my hard work, my personality, my confidence, my faith, my dedication to my church, my community, my dedication to my God. You see, I'm not just addicted to power. I'm addicted to my power. I'm sure that you can probably have to agree with me. You feel the same way. You are addicted to your own power, aren't you? Now, there's another side to this personal power addiction. Because I ride high with success, I also sink low with per perceived failure. I play the scene over in my head over and over again and my neighbor didn't take me up on the invitation come to church. I hang my head and beat myself up when I couldn't muster up the courage to invite my cousin to church when I had the opportunity. Again. Or the, or the, the or the, was less than a Christian example at the social gathering of my friends last week. Because I am addicted to power, I start to get intimidated about sharing and living my faith. I think, well, I don't have the right personality. I don't have the right stuff to invite a neighbor to church. My life isn't good or put together enough to be a light for others. I can't be a witness for Jesus. And I despair. And again, I don't think I'm alone. Jesus responds to the apostles' question. It is not for you to know the times or the seasons that the Father has set by his own authority. He directs them away from themselves and points towards God, the Father. And then he goes on, he says, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When I re read or when I read these or hear these words from Jesus, I tend to cling to the you will be my witnesses. I get excited, I get intimidated all at the same time. Yes, I want to be a witness for Jesus. I know what he has done. I want to share it. I think of the people in my life, in my community, who need to hear his word, who need to see his love. I'm pumped to be a witness. I think of the people in my life, in my community, and I'm scared out of my mind. One moment I tell myself I will be really good at this, and the next moment... I see how unfit and how terrible I am to, to, to accomplish this job. But that's the addiction to my power, rearing its ugly head. I either puff up with pride or I cower in despair. And it's what happens when I skip over what Jesus says immediately before you are my witness. He said, but you will receive power from the Holy Spirit, or when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. 
Yeah, there's power in being my witnesses, Jesus said. And if it's power you crave, you'll have it. But it's not your power. It's not by your will or effort that the message of sins forgiven will be shared, starting in Jerusalem and then to the ends of the entire earth. He said to the apostles this very thing, and it's not your will or effort that gives faith to those here in Holton or Fremont or Twin Lake or Muskegon. Jesus says it to you and to me as well. People will repent and rejoice, yes, but it will be by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not even up to you to acquire or to grab this power. You will, what does Jesus say? Receive it. It's given. I think of it that way. It's, it's really freeing. The power that you and I receive from Jesus through the Holy Spirit rescues us from this roller coaster of pride and despair caused by the addiction to our own power. Jesus promises and gives the Holy Spirit. He gives his power. And that's how we're his witnesses. And isn't, the very, isn't that the very thing we pray for in the, in the prayer of the day for today? Grant us the spirit of truth that at your command and by your power we may be your witnesses in all the world. And he answers that prayer. He gives the spirit of truth. He gives his power and command in the word. So get addicted to that power. As a witness for Jesus, cling to the truths and the promises of God's word. Be addicted to the Spirit's power. Because of the Spirit's power, Jesus is able to say to you and me, you will be my witnesses. It's amazing, isn't it? Though we, like the apostles, gather on the Mount, who gathered on the Mount of Olives, are often confused and distracted and have our focus in an entirely wrong place, Though we are a, com a completely unfit in and of itself, in and of ourselves, to live for Jesus and to share his message, he made us witnesses. Wow. But then again, when I take a moment to consider what it means to be a witness, Perhaps it's not that crazy. A witness is someone who has seen or experienced something. We have. Sure, we may not have been standing there looking up intently into the sky as Jesus ascended into, into the clouds. But we know his love. We have experienced his forgiveness. Forgiveness of pride. Forgiveness for a misplaced focus. Forgiveness for thinking being a witness depends all on us. Christian friends, the empty tomb proves it. You, me, we're forgiven. So who's better? Who better to share God's love than those who have received it firsthand? Addicted to the Spirit's power, the power and confidence given to us in the Word, proclaimed what Jesus have done in both word and in your actions. And when God blesses our work, when that co-worker co asks why you live the way that you do, when a friend takes you 
up on an invitation to church. When a grandchild stared, starts to repeat the Bible stories they learned from you, we're filled with praise to him. Not filled with pride. And when things don't go as expected, we ask for God's continued guidance and blessing. Now we don't despair. Witnessing in the Spirit's work is the Spirit's work, and it is done by the Spirit's power. What makes you feel powerful? Being a witness for Jesus, empowered by the Spirit, Please rise. Now may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus unto life everlasting. His peace be with you. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, Crown Him with Many Crowns, hymn number 55. <laughs>
O ascended prophet, equip your church to proclaim the precious gospel message of God's love for all the world. Give courage to our hearts, power to our words, and success to our efforts. O ascended high priest, represent us before the Father as his own dear children and heirs. Defend us against Satan's every accusation. Ask for the Father's rich blessings in our everyday lives. Plead for his mercy and grant our behalf. O Ascended King, direct the affairs of governments and nations that they may serve the best interests of your Church. You are our Lord, Master, and King. As the disciples lifted their eyes to watch you, your ascension, so lift our eyes daily to look for your coming again in glory. Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus, come quickly. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We give thee but thine own, whatever the gifts may be. All that we have is thine alone, a trust, O Lord, from thee. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.
Good evening again to all of you. Uh, our special offering, uh, just a couple of announcements, our special offering um, starting this evening um, and we'll go through next week as to help raise funds for our new uh, camera system. Um, we'll be mounting it towards the back of the church and it'll be a, a much better system, be able to uh, zoom in and, and, and make a better sound quality and, and so on. And it'll be a, a big improvement on what we have already for our, uh, our, uh, our worship services for those who can't, who can't make it in. Um, anyway, uh, we'll, we'll have a special offering um, this week and next week for that. Uh, the, we have a uh, deacon's meeting this evening directly after our service. Um, also, there is a basket out there for our spring cleaning um, uh, because of the volunteers, uh, the shortage of volunteers in the past, we're decided, to, uh, the, the ladies of the Everly Circle have decided to hire a cleaning service to do that, and so donations are being asked for um, for, for that purpose. Uh, if, you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to help out with that, we, they, we, it would be greatly appreciated. Also coming up next week in, on Wednesday is the, uh, the, our Holton Community Blood Drive here at the church. It'll be from 2 to 7. Um, if you haven't signed up online already, um, you can talk to Robin. Um, she can help you uh, sign up if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to uh, be a part of that. This Sunday, we have our red, white, and blue bake sale. Um, bakers and buyers are still needed for that. Those are all of my announcements. Are there any other announcements this evening? See, now well, uh, I wish each and every every one of you a truly blessed week um, and one that is uh, focused on our ascended and risen Lord, who now rules all things on our behalf and is interceding with for us uh, with our heavenly.